Welcome back to part two of this video on the Pro Tools surround panner. At this point it's worth talking about these three controls at the bottom of the panner, which are the divergence controls. They're probably best demonstrated in XY mode, so I've temporarily switched back to that. Divergence is a way of controlling the perceived width of a sound in a mix. The lower the divergence, the more a signal will bleed into nearby speaker channels. So if the sound, for example, was on the front left channel, initially, with 100% divergence, it will be completely isolated in that channel. But let's say, for example, I wanted to spread the sound a little bit into the nearby front speakers. Well, one way I could achieve that would be to reduce the front divergence. Again, it's hard to demo in stereo, but you can hear it to, to a degree. And you can also see it on the meters here. So reduce that. The lower it gets, the more spillage we get to the point where a 0% setting essentially means that the sound's going to play back equally through all three front speakers. If I just run this again, you can hear that this front pan control is now basically defunct. Because we've got zero divergence, it now has no effect on the sound across the front of the sound stage. We also have divergence controls for rear and front to rear. So if I wanted this sound to pan across the front, but be heard to a degree in the rear speakers, I might set an appropriate divergence for the front, maybe I don't need to worry about the rear for now, and then I can, starting with the front to rear on 100, you can see that if I pan this across the front now, it moves across those front speakers, using them all to a degree, but we're still getting some movement. Maybe I'll go with a slightly higher setting so it's a bit more obvious where it's positioned. So to get it to spill into those rear speakers, I'll just decrease the divergence for the uh, front rear control, and now you can see from the meters at least that we are getting the sound to some degree in those surround speakers. This is a good way of increasing the perceived width or size of a sound. If you wanted to increase the spillage between the left and right surround channels, that's where you'd use this rear divergence control. Whenever the divergence controls are set to anything less than 100%, a blue bounding box appears, as you can see here. And the shape is determined by the percentage values that you've got set. The smaller the box, the lower the divergence, and so the greater the width of the sound. This brings me on to another of the four panning modes, Divergence Editing Mode. In this mode, I can adjust the divergence just by clicking and dragging in the divergence grid. So for example, I can click here and adjust front divergence if I move it left and right. If I move it back and forth, I can adjust the front to rear divergence. Or if I click at the bottom, move it left or right, I can adjust the rear divergence directly from the grid. One thing you can't do in this mode is pan the sound by moving the green dot. You can see it just doesn't let me do it. You still retain the ability though to pan the sound using the three position knobs here. Before I move on, let me just mention about the center percentage and LFE send level controls. This is impossible to demonstrate properly when you're listening to it in stereo, but you'll be able to see it on the meters at least. Let me just show this dialogue track. Okay, and bring up the output for that. So if something is centrally panned at the front with the center percentage control set to 100, then it's going to be heard out of only that speaker. That's assuming, of course, that the divergence is also set to 100. So I'll just run a short section of this dialogue, keep an eye on these meters, and you'll see only the center channel is active. Now, if I said to you, camper van, you wouldn't instantly think of a Ford, would you? Okay. On 0%, it won't use the center speaker at all, and it will actually be a phantom image between the left and right speakers, as it would if you panned it centrally in a normal stereo mix. I'll just demonstrate that. Now, if I said to you, camper van, you wouldn't instantly think of a Ford, would you? So the question now is, when is this useful? Well, it can be really useful when you want to keep certain sounds out of the center speaker in order to maintain clarity of dialogue. So let's say, this have this dialogue, is, maybe it's locked well, to the centre by having 100% centre percentage, but at the same time, perhaps we've decades, also got uh, this helicopter playing. So okay, so, it might you initially it might be on 100%. That could be a problem. A Again, ago, this is hard to demo in stereo, Melbourne, but both would be coming out of the centre speaker. Manifest. As well as sounding quite narrow, what that could also do is reduce the audibility of the dialogue a little bit. So instead of having it on 100%, Maybe the helicopter's on a very low or even 0% setting. So I could, you can see the difference in the meters here, reduce the helicopter. And the effect of that, when you've got three speakers at the front, is that the dialogue is central. The helicopter, while still centrally panned, is a phantom image 
between the left and right speakers, so that provides that acoustic separation between the two sounds in the mix. Let me just show this other track which I've got, which is an explosion sound effect. This is actually rooted to 5.1 once again, except this time we've got a more complicated looking panner because it's a stereo panner. Probably best if I just solo this track. Just turn it down a little bit. Okay, let me just run this sound. I'll talk about the two sets of controls which you get on stereo tracks shortly, but for now let's take a look at the LFE SEM control. I'll just show you this output meter at the same time. So initially we're not going to send anything to the sub, that's the default. So if we just run this sound, you can see in this case it comes out the left and right speakers, but it doesn't come out of the sub at all. Well maybe we want to add some weight to the sound, this control is really straightforward. Increase it to increase how much of the signal goes to the sub. And you'll see on the meters, when I increase it, this meter here, which represents the low frequency effects channel, has now got a signal in it indicating that we're getting some of this explosion sound in the subwoofer. Now we'll take a look at the fourth and final surround panning mode, which is Auto Glide. This mode lets you write surround panner automation by clicking different locations within the panning grid rather than manually moving the panner controls. In fact, you can't drag the sound in this mode. So if I start this running, I can click at another position and the sound glides there. Click again somewhere else and it'll move there and so on. How quickly the sound moves from one position to another is determined by a preference, which is under setup, preferences, mixing, and it's this option here, auto glide time. The default is one second, but you can set any time from 10 milliseconds up to 10 seconds. I'll just change this to something a lot shorter, go 200 milliseconds. Now if I run the same sound and I click, you can see it's moving much more quickly around the sound stage. So far we've been looking at the 5.1 panner, but if you're working in 7.1, the panner will have a couple of additions, as you can see here. The most obvious one is of course that we've now got an additional set of surrounds, but we've also gained a side percentage control. This is very similar to the center percentage, but it controls how much of the side surround you want the sound from that particular track to use. So I'll just bring up the level meter for the 7.1 master to demonstrate this. Let's just run this sound, maybe it's on just the left side speaker, and you can see it's purely coming from just that speaker. Reduce the side percentage control, and it becomes a phantom image, this time between the front left and rear left speakers. Obviously, a zero setting doesn't use the side surrounds at all. Stereo tracks assigned to multi-channel outputs provide dual panners as we saw before. Just open that up again. These can either operate independently, as I've got it set at the moment, so there's a left channel, there's a right, we can pan them independently of one another. All the controls can be linked in a number of different ways. So firstly, click this link icon. When they're initially linked, they'll basically move together in unison, as you can see here. But we also have some invert controls. So this button inverts the left and right pan controls across the front. This inverts it across the rear. And this is the front rear inverse. Let me just set something here. Maybe I'll link these and just invert front left and front right. You can see that they operate like that. Or we can maybe try and invert it in the opposite direction. This can be a little bit confusing initially, but it does make sense when you get used to it. Well, I hope this video has provided you with some useful information on the Pro Tools surround panner. There are various other slight variations on the panner, depending on the speaker layout that you're working with, such as 6.1 and 7.1 SDDS, but I've covered the basic concepts and controls of the surround panner. Thanks for watching.